Well, thank you everybody for coming. Apologize for being a little late. Uh, obviously, a lot of activity happening here today at the Capitol. Uh, we are here today uh, as a caucus in spirit. Not all of us are here right now, but uh, 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 to have a very important discussion with the people of the state of Connecticut. Uh, we are facing uncertain economic times. Uh, wages in Connecticut and across America are not keeping up with expenses. Uh, the United States has lost 80,000 jobs in March. Reports today say that gas could reach $4 a gallon this summer, and we continue to face a home foreclosure crisis along with skyrocketing energy and health care costs. The Connecticut economy is showing signs of strain, too. A record number, 2,800 businesses closed their doors in the first quarter of 2008. The people of Connecticut are becoming increasingly concerned about the state of our economy and what, what, what we, as lawmakers, are going to do about it. Since the beginning of this legislative <coughs> session and even before, Governor Rell and Republicans have advocated caution in adjusting this year's budget. We said the best way to protect Connecticut's economic security was to invest in our small businesses, which account for most new jobs in Connecticut, and in our state's greatest resource, a highly skilled and educated workforce. To that end, we offered a comprehensive jobs growth initiative that called for expanding job tax credits, repealing the business entity tax, eliminating outdated, redundant, and counterproductive business regulations, and providing tax incentives to emerging and next generation industries like alternative fuel, environmental remediation, and nanotechnology. Industries that will provide good paying jobs to thousands of people in the state of Connecticut. Today, as we reaffirm our support for these proposals, which we believe would provide a strong foundation for our state's long-term economic security, Democratic leaders are heading in a decidedly and dangerously different direction. In this time of economic uncertainty, the tax and spending plan that has come out of the Appropriation and Finance Committees in the last couple of weeks can only be characterized as hopelessly out of touch with the financial difficulties Connecticut residents are facing every day. You may recall just a short two months ago, not only did Democrats say they agreed with our proposals to eliminate the business entity tax and lower other taxes to help small businesses, they were also going to provide a tax rebate to more than a million Connecticut residents. It is remarkable how quickly things change. As you know, without apology or explanation, Democrats have rescinded on both of these commitments. Instead, they have proposed at least $154 million in new spending and a series of new tax increases in order to cover the bill. Among these new tax proposals is a new homestead exemption, which is nothing more than a tax shift that will cost small businesses millions and discourage new business from settling here. Also included in this new tax plan is the infamous delivery sales tax. This sales tax increase causes us great concern. Forced through the Finance Committee last week, this bill would, for the first time, apply a 6% state tax to the delivery of charges of all goods transported in Connecticut. Whether it be a senior citizen awaiting a delivery of needed medication, a single mom awaiting a, the delivery of her family's groceries, or a concerned parent sending a care package to their children in college, everyone will pay more. Moreover, the delivery of consumer products will be subject to this tax at several points along the supply chain. Each time it is taxed, the cost of the product to the end consumer will increase. And who's going to be hurt most by the Democrats' new tax increase? Connecticut consumers, mom and pop stores, and small businesses. The very people just two months ago they promised to help. This tax is going to make products which are equal in every other way more expensive to consumers in Connecticut than in any of our neighboring states. What is most alarming is the fact that the Democrats created this new tax increase without a public hearing and without any estimate of the potential fiscal impact. Let me assure you, we will continue to fight for the people of the state of Connecticut and we stand united in opposition to any and all new tax increases. 
We will continue to fight for our proposals aimed at creating jobs and growing our economy in this time of need.